Well, today's episode of Uncensored is brought to you by PointsBet. Check out PointsBet's great odds and offers. Download the PointsBet app today and gamble responsibly. Well, today I'm running uh, my eye over each team uh, mid-season review, looking at their strengths and weaknesses, where they can improve, uh, and what our top eight will be. Uh, I'm joined by my old man, Robert Finch. Dad, thanks for joining me. Pleasure. Um, before we get into the uh, each teams, um, we'll just take a look at the, the competition at the uh, sort of halfway mark of the season. Uh, and already at the halfway mark, there's a there's a clear divide between the top and bottom teams. Uh, that there is, there's a disparity um, in res- in respect to uh, the Panthers, Storms, and to a lesser extent the Earls. And I think it's um, probably uh, even got greater with the last two losses to the Rabbitohs, mm. uh, where the top two sides put 50 on them. Yep. So um, it's clearly that the top two sides are way uh, way in advance of of the remainder of the sides. Um, the Earls are still hanging in there, they'll, they'll beat the weekend, and but I think they'll come back from that. The Rabbitohs, um, they've got some questions to answer, mm. I think, going forward. Yeah. Uh, how much do you play this into the new rules of develop? Because I, I just think, I look at the Storm, obviously, I'm, I'm a Storm person, I go for the Storm. So many times the clubs in the league would always just say the Storm won because of the wrestle. Well, they quickened the rules up and made it quick, and guess who won last year? Mm. The same old teams, and you, and you see Penrith... Even when there's injuries, I know the Storm had a truckload of injuries on the weekend, they still produce good performances. Do you think it's a combination of everything? But how do you think the, have the rules played into this? Oh, look, yeah. look, I think the rules is exacerbated and, and obviously shown um, the sides who have got good culture, good uh, coach education, good yeah. player education, uh, the processes and systems around what they do and how they get players back from injury yeah. uh, are first class, uh, and those that aren't. Um, uh, the Panthers and the Storm um, clearly are way in, a, in advance. Like, as you said, Storm had a, a, m- a lot of players out last week and uh, they still perform really, really well. Um, uh, the Panthers, uh, they've been probably blessed with less injuries, um, injuries and yep. suspensions at this point in time. Who knows what's down the track for them? Yeah. But they are playing a very, very uh, quality game of footy. Yeah. Um, very expansive, um, very skilled highly skilled yep. um, and test a defensive line um, on every play. Yeah. Um, so that's where sides who are probably not at that level, uh, with the new rules, it exposes them even further. Yeah. Um, with more continuity of football, more ball in play, uh, which then means more fatigue, which then means uh, yeah. o- obviously more points. Yeah. Well, you, you talk about more points. The lopsided scores, we haven't seen them. Melbourne have won their eighth game by 13 plus on the weekend. Very rarely, you know, I, I could probably count on one hand, a, a score line where it's a, it's a one score game, let yeah. alone, you know, four to two points. Um, do you think sides are struggling with that momentum when it goes against them? They, they, they just can't stop it. It's like a. Yeah, well, it's it's like the, it's, once the dam busts, that's that's yeah. the end of them. It's ve- it's very difficult in the modern game, especially with the continuity of the six again now, yep. um, which you know creates uh, that momentum yep. for a, for a team who can turn, as you said earlier in one of your podcasts with Munster, you can be up by eighteen and still a bit edgy about it yeah. all. And and the Titans uh, have, have led by uh, plenty yeah. and got run down on a number of occasions now. So you're never far enough in front yeah. in this modern game because of the continuity of footy, where previously there was a sets for sets. Yeah. There was more sets for sets. Well, now you're getting, you're not getting that set for set. Yeah. You now they talk about getting into the grind. Well, that doesn't happen anymore. Mm. Or, uh, actually, it does happen, but not as regularly yeah. as it happens because of the six again. Mm. Um, I know sides are given, uh, given penalties or given the six away after one tackle um, because they're, they're confident they can defend that set, but uh, you can't do that for 80 minutes yeah. and, and against the good sides. Yeah. Um, especially the Panthers or the Storm, because they're going to make you pay. Uh, and now, introduction to that, uh, we've had that at the start of the year. I think Trent Robinson made a good point. Um, one thing I found interesting in the report from the NRL said how there's no data to show fatigue to play in a factor. I thought that was quite disrespectful to every player and coach who's saying it who clearly have said there's fatigue, there's, you're more fatigued in the game. Robbo made a good point that it happens in waves, like it... Um, and you, you were saying, now the influence of the bunker, they, you, from the last couple of years we've tried to get away from the bunker, but these new rules with the sin binning and reports has brought the bunker back into the game more than ever. Yeah, it has, and uh, especially over the last uh, couple of weeks with the crackdown on the high shots, 
uh, there is more um, learning on the bunker than I've seen for a long, long time. 18 months ago, 12 months ago, the game was screaming out for less bunker interference. Yeah. And from my observations, I think there's now more yeah. interference from the bunker. We're going back plays now yeah. for, um, yeah. f- for breaches of... Uh, um, yeah. Um, high Hot shots times, yeah. or uh, crushes or whatever they, they, they call them these right. days. Um, so maybe that's now starting to slow the game a tad yeah. as well because there's a lot more st- stoppages in the last mm. two weeks, I've noticed, mm. than or my mm. observation, than previous. Um, but to me, um, uh, I don't know how far you go um, with the influence of the bunker. Now, I, I know I was quite uh, vocal on, on my new rules, Simbi. Now, no one say. I think that the the rules around concussion are great, and and the the knowledge around um, concussion and head knocks, and and we're really going leaps and bounds. No one's saying not to that, but the extent now, it's it's a contact sport, and there's going to be collisions that can't be avoided, um, or when blokes are dropping in tackles, and and we see him on slow motion replay on TV. He said, "Oh, he hit him in the head," but it's happening at at breakneck speeds in real life. That can't be avoided. Do you think we've gone over the top with some of the sin bins? Oh, so especially especially the ones, um, and I think most would agree that someone like Tedesco does drop um, close. To, as a defender, you, you're thousands to be able to readjust, readjust to that. Um, so whether whether they start to look at uh, accidental contact, which yeah. is I still think needs to be looked at. Yeah. But uh, maybe that's a five minute sin bin. Um, uh, the, the issue with Sinbin is, and we've concentrated a lot on the man who's carrying the footy, which mm. which is the game has always done. But a lot of a majority of concussions are, are with defenders yeah. who tackle around the around yeah. the legs. They, you know, they, you get a hip or you, you know elbow. an elbow. Um, uh, you look at uh, Corden I and mean, you look at the recent retirement of Jake Friend, yeah. both defenders. Um, how we deal with that oh. in our game is is another is another matter, and I think the game needs to yeah. sit down at the end of the year and really nut this out. Yeah, and I think I think the game needs to, if you're going to make these rule changes, there's there's nothing geared towards defence. So it's a it's a bit like all the new rules in cricket were to the batsmen. We got to give something back to the bowlers. You got to give something back to the defence where you can't hit around the head. Well, how about you make it more. Um, Incentive to tuck around the legs because mm. if you tuck around his legs, it's it's a it's a dominant run from the opposition. So you've got to let go of legs. But so the only way to get a dominant tackle is be over the ball and up, um, yeah. ball and all, which is then you're more of a chance of yeah, going in it. So yeah. why don't they give incentive if they don't want? You can't stack it all to the offence because, like you now, you see some penalties like mate, that's just it's you just shake your head with some stuff. Where do, what do you want the bloke to do defensively? Because it's all the rules are geared towards the, the attacking player. Yeah, and, and that's right. Look, I, when I was the head of, uh, of the referees, this was always an issue. Uh, and they always said, look, you've got to give more time to the man who makes the tackle around the legs. And and with all, you know, with all the right purposes, you, you try to. Yeah. But if you're on an edge, if the ball's been shifted, you can't get numbers in tackle. on that tackle. Yeah. So that... And what tends to happen then, the man with the football plants the ball and looks to try to get up. Now, maybe we need to look at, and I've heard this come back, that you, you can flop into a legsy tackle. Yeah. Uh, maybe also that, that that legsy defender doesn't have to let go no, of the legs. Right. Yeah. And f- because I find a lot of the times they'll penalise the defender when the player with the football does not get to his feet yeah. to play the ball correctly. He just plants it on the ground and expects everyone to ro- roll away. Yeah. The rules of the game don't, don't yeah, stipulate that. You've got to take the ball off the ground and stand. Yeah. Um, so that, that there's a couple of things that could be done there. Yeah. But, I, but if they're going to push um, players to defend lower, um, whether they're going to defend that low or just drop down below the, yeah. their chest, um, this, will, this will come down to tackle technique, which I'm, I'm sure... Uh, very learned coaches are currently uh, in, are looking at uh, how we best do this. Yeah. And, and plus still things like stopping the offload. You're it's told a... to wrap the ball up and to wrap the ball up, you've got, like the ball carrier holds the ball there. Yeah. Under his chin. Yeah. Um, well, you know, things like that. So they've got to have something geared to defence that you can't just be all the rules no. to, to the ball carrier. Well, le- legsy, legsy defence will create offloads. Yeah. It, it'll create a terrific spectacle. Yeah. It'll create more points. Yeah. It'll create more fatigue. Um, if that's what they're looking for in the game, well, well, that's that's what they'll get, but they'll get more blowout scores. Yeah. And I think, 
I think, um, you know, in my early days at the NRL with uh, David Gallup, the CEO, he really tried to make sure that the games or the teams were as competitive as possible for as long as possible throughout the season to keep the interest of, mm. of the general public and members in, in mm. you know, in, in place. Yep. Um, I, I, I'm seeing a little bit of evening out um, of, of, of teams now because some of the lower sides are playing each other now yep. and knocking each other. So, you know, from, from um, position seven, um, there's a negative... There's a negative already. Um, for and against. For and against. But that's always been the case. Mm. So you, you can make the eighth position and lose more, and lose more games than you've or, won. Or 50, so that's not 50, di- any different than it's been in previous years. But when you look at you know the Panthers and the Storm, who um, uh, Panthers are on 22 and the Storm's are on 18, but so are the Earls for that matter. But then you drop down to 16 and the Roosters 14. Now, the Roosters are another side that's, that are about to face some challenges. Both yeah. their halves are young. Yeah. Both have been up for a little while now. Yeah. Um, Sh- truckload of injuries to tra- the senior A truckload players. of injuries, a truckload of suspensions. Um, mm. uh, sooner, you know, whether they respond to that challenge. Yeah. And, and, and They've been good so far. They, they have they? been very, very good. But it's long very difficult yeah. for a young fella to do it for a long season. Yeah. Um, with the new rules, the, the, the officials, obviously they're in... They're just following directive. Do you think they sit there, and knowing the work from, I know you don't want to put words in people's mouths, but like it's hard enough to be a referee. But then you, then the NRL comes out with, uh, it's such a big etiquette that oh, this is so important. Well, why was it just brought in round nine? Mm. If it's such an important thing, shouldn't have already been happening in the off season. Anyway, but the, all of a sudden the game has to be ruled adjudicated differently. Does that put pressure on the refs or puts them in? Um, Puts them down the, the gun barrel of, of coaches now that because they're making decisions that these new rules and the interpretation of symbols it it impacts results. Yeah. So the referee how he sees things now impacts can win or lose a game for a team. Look, I, I, they would argue, Mr. Valenis would argue that the high tackle always should have been penalised. I thought it was. And it was always the game's was, never been cleaner. always was penalised, but now a, a high forceful tackle is a bin, and it's a 10-minute bin. Um, what I'm seeing too is, and, and that's, a, that's a very good question, why, why now? Um, yeah. Why halfway through the season when we've had a lot of change in our game yeah. already? We introduced fatigue with the six again, more ball in play, you know, quicker footy. Um, but then we, we then bring in a rule about the, not bring in the rule, but we then um, work harder on eliminating high shots but you're going to have high shots when you're fatigued. Yeah. You're going to have injuries when you're fatigued. Yeah. That's that's what's starting to show in the injury rates of these yeah. of these clubs. You've got thir- your top squad is 30 players. When you're starting to dig into your 28, 29, 30, you're at the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of these clubs, St George is one of them, um, that are that's where they're yeah. picking their teams from. And with all due respect, those players can't compete at the top level. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I'd like to bring up on 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 these. Um, high shots and, and the influence of the bunker here is one referee. When you look at, and this is once again an observation I have, I look at the referee and he's talking to the bunker about where the contact yeah. was so and was it possible. I'll tell you now, because I was, uh, I'm not pushing the two referee again, but I instigated the two referee system for that, for that reason, to be able, not only for that reason, for, for many other reasons. Where he's positioned, he cannot see where the contact is. He doesn't know how forceful it is. So by having one referee, we bring the bunker, we invite the bunker in because he's the, that person it's is the, the only one. He's the eyes of what's going. That's why we, we stop and he talks. Yeah, well, you see that. You see the referee blow the penalty and the bloke's back in the defensive line. Then he times out and brings him back out and puts him in the bin. That's right. Um, yeah. See, I don't know how much impact you want, you want from, from um, the bunker like that, but I just think... You know, and, and it's not about. It's just not the game I, p- I played growing up. It's just, you know, the contests are over after twenty minutes if two blokes are in the bin or a bloke's getting sent off. Now, no one's saying you want concussion. You want to be people protecting the head, but I think it's just gone too far. Um, you had a look at some of the injuries there with some teams, uh, and and it's there's for a lot. Some like the Roosters, you know, they got nine injuries. So yeah. out of your top top thirty. You, there you, you're digging in that you've already only got 21 available and you've got to name 18. So you, you, you're digging into your, even more into your park footy type guys. Well, that, that's right. When you look at even Canberra Raiders, like you look at the Raiders and you've got um, a lot of these s- s- suspensions, but, you know, like Whiten and Hodgson and 
Papali or Papali or Papalihi. Papalihi. Um, uh, then you've got uh, you know Rapana. Uh, you've got Tapine. All injuries. So yeah. they're looking at seven or eight players who are injured. Yeah. Canterbury has, has got yeah, ten of them, uh, yeah. and some of these ACLs, ACLs, they're like that. Their, season. their seasons. Yeah. Um, you look at Manly Seagulls. They've got a fair few as well. Um, Newcastle Knights. All, most clubs, other than Penrith, yeah. um, have a fairly sizable injury suspension yeah. um, list. List. Um, and as I said, the top squad is thirty. Yeah. Yeah, well, going on to that with injuries, we, we talk about the expansion the game spoke about. I don't see how there's no. I don't think there's a talent pool big enough to, to play to have another team. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Because clearly, like you said, now we've got we've got teams after two rounds. You could say they cannot win the competition, you know, and there are probably eight or nine of them, ten of them. They're, you know, I think only the, the, anyone out of the top. I really think the Storm or Penrith will win, but I think a Parramatta. Rabbitohs. I even think Manly are a chance to back in if they stay healthy. I think the Roosters. I don't think they can win with their injuries. They'll still be competitive through the season. But you know, well, you're writing teams off before they start because their talent's just not there. Do you think expansion is an option at the moment? Uh, look, um, no. Um, I look at what I look at. I've, I've seen the last time we grew the competition when when the Warriors came in and uh, and and uh, Cowboys and, and others. Um, Crushes. Some some time ago, uh, it weakened other clubs. Mm. Um, it uh, because the talent pool wasn't there. Uh, it inflated the market yeah. for player payments, and, and that will happen again. Now we do need to um, to grow. The, I think we need to. I think we've t- honestly. I think, in my humble opinion, we've we've we d- we've walked away from our greatest um, competitive advantage um, when clubs. Uh, ran development. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, there were some clubs who, like Newcastle, St George, Brisbane, Cowboys, who have a, you know, Parramatta, Penrith, massive uh, talent pools to, to pick from. Um, but by by them developing the players and going into clubs and coaching coaches, and then the coaches, obviously, you know, educated young players coming through. Uh, our talent pool rolling through the the grades was the envy of every other yeah. sport. Uh, and for some reason, um, the governing body some years ago now, not the current governing body, moved away from that yeah. and really and, and really focused on schools. Now, I'm not saying you don't go into schools either. That, that, don't get me wrong. But you've got a captured audience of kids who play the game in cl- at club level. Um, there needs to be more resources and education go into there because I can see uh, I get out to the to the to the junior footy. Uh, there's lots of kids out there who love this game of, foot, of yeah. footy uh, and mums and dads are doing the best they can. Um, but there needs to be some education uh, and getting back to... Because clubs don't do it anymore for the simple reason that there's no value with a salary cap yeah. anymore. I, I can develop uh, you know, five players in my area now and, a salary and, they, and someone else pinches them. Um, and this has been a discussion yeah. for a long, long, long time now. But our, our greatest competitive advantage against other, other sports was our development, and yeah. I don't think we've we've. I know, I know they're looking at a, a program called Climb now, where yeah. NRL is going to push it back to the states. That's still in limbo. I'm not quite sure where that's at, but we need we need to understand in the development of our game. There was two pathways. Yeah. There was one which is high performance, and 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 for the elite uh, player. But there's also another which is community level. Some people just want to play. Uh, local footy, yeah, mates. they don't want to train each, uh, three days a week. They want to go and play footy at the weekend with their, their, their mates. They still they still um, or, or touch footy or league tag or whatever it well mm. may be. They still follow the game. They still support the game. They become members. They buy, uh, they buy apparel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All those sorts of things still um, create interest in our game. Yeah. Um, but they don't want... The, the four or five days a week yeah. training. They don't want to have to go and do the, the weights. But there is a group that, that actually do. And, and, and it's funny you talk about, you know, and I know Melbourne Storm, that's not, they're not local juniors, but, but the players they bring through, they got down there at 16, 17, 18. They've yeah. they developed them. Uh, Andrew Johns wrote a story um, not too long ago about when the Knights first came in and you were there, they, they put, it could have been Matthew, one of them, put things in place for the junior systems and how you teach all these young players. And then by 90, 93, 94, 90, 
those 16, 17 year olds are now 22, 23. And obviously they had that great run of success. Yeah. Um, you know, sort yeah. of from 95 to 05. Mm. I even go to Manchester United, where, where Alex Ferguson took over. Their greatest run of period was from about 91 onwards. And that was based around the, the kids, the local juniors that come through, Ryan Giggs, Paul Skulls, uh, Beckham. Uh, Beckham, yeah. Beckham was from London, but yeah. he was brought into their junior academy. The Neville brothers, mm. all Manchurians, all these kids from Manchester. Oh, Giggs was from Salford, originally from Wales. But, yeah. but, but even that, that's, the big, that's one of the biggest sporting clubs in the world, yeah. which can go pay hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, on transfer markets to yeah. get the... But their greatest success was around, based around their team... Their, which, de- which, their development. Which, Developing yeah. junior players, and that, so so it works on any in any club that they've, yeah, you're sure you can go buy players, but unless you've got a good junior base, and you sh- when you're buying those players, that's just to add to to the yeah. uh, to the base you already have. A- absolutely right, and, and and actually, we many many years ago when I was over with the Super League side in, in England, we went to Manchester United and we had a look at their system. It's just magnificent, yeah. unbelievable. That's a long time ago. But just going back to, I think Matty John spoke about, and, and one of the things he said was very, very important to me. We, we taught principles. We didn't teach strategies. So the principles of how you play the game, the skills that were required to be able to implement those principles um, were, were the core of, of, of the club. But the first thing that uh, Alan McMahon did um, with a man called Alan Bell, who was, uh, in my opinion, the smartest person (laughs) that I've I've ever experienced in rugby league, um, and David Waite, is is that we build a culture. And when you you look at, and I know we talk about culture regularly, Mm. but, and it's this fuzzy word out there, but... If you understand what culture is about, you don't have to look at the Melbourne Storm to understand what a culture is about. Mm. It's regardless of what player is playing, this is what we do around here. Mm. And regardless of whether a a coach goes or that Smith leaves or or, uh, Slater retires or Cronk leaves, things go on. Mm. Now, everyone was telling telling us the Storm was going to fall over as soon as the big three retired. Well, no, they haven't. Mm. Along comes Pappenhausen and... And if he's not one of the best fullbacks in the game, I'm not here. Yeah. Um, but that's 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 their systems and yeah. processes within the club that drives that success. The question I would ask a lot of these other clubs is: Do they do they have the same structures? Oh, not, not so much as Melbourne, because obviously teams are made up with people with complementary skills, and everyone's got different complementary uh, different skills in di- in different clubs. So, how what your culture is 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 is. Uh, is specific mm. to your club, but I look at, I look at when I came to St George, I, I never was t- had to be told what I had to do because you just felt, it just felt. Yeah. <laughs> you just felt if you don't do it, it, you're not exactly part of it. exactly yeah. right. Uh, well, you know, I look at the, yeah, you're, you're right. I look at the Roosters. I don't think if you see a lot of teams in games, they get a few injuries, or a few setbacks, and the white flag just goes up. You look at the Roosters. You know they didn't have they got they suffered a tough loss against the Broncos on the weekend, but previous to that, some of the wins they've had. You know, I didn't think they were going to go as good because of the amount of injuries, yeah. you know. Um, you know, young Sam Walker comes in, Lockie Lamb. They've got young kids. You know, they've hit the ground running, but it's, a, it's because they're in a club that has a winning culture. Um, do you think training now... It would be interesting. No, I probably should give Belly a call about this or Adam O'Brien or one of the coaches I speak to if they do drills with 12 men because you, there's no doubt a big game's going to come down... Uh, you'll have a period with 12 men on the field. Um, and your ability to defend with 12 men has never been more important now because there's no doubt at some stage every team's going to be have someone sin bin. Uh, look, I, I, I have no doubt that they do. Um, but I, I think they've probably done that for some time. Yeah. Um, when you look at some clubs and how they handle um, uh, a sin bin, yeah. uh, you look at the 10 minutes and they had, they've had the football for 10 minutes. They're the ones with the 12. Yeah. So it's, it's how you handle that period of time. Yeah. Um, if you don't handle it in a professional manner, yeah. um, you're defending for that 10 minutes and you could leak two, three tries. Yeah. Um, but I have no doubt that they would, they would, they would do drills, um, you know, eight against 11 or whatever, yeah. uh, whatever the number may well be, uh, to ensure that the defensive structure is, is working yeah. overtime. But you can't do that for 10 minutes yeah. without the footy. And if you, you – and I go back to Melbourne, but you go to the good sides, 
they they tend to don't give away too many sets defensively. Yeah. They'll they'll try to keep the footy, yeah. and, and they do keep the footy. Um, you know, they'll put it in, into the end goal, get the football back. Um, yeah. They'll do they'll, they'll put they use their skill and their football knowledge and their football know-how and their football principles to be able to control that period of time. Well, certainly, it's one way to help you to, when you've got 12 on the field is don't have to defend. That's have, exactly. have the ball, keep, keep them... Keep That's the, exactly uh, right. Keep the ball away from them. Right, we'll dive into the teams now. We'll start, go from the bottom up. Uh, the Dogs, uh, first, I look at their things they need to improve and their strengths. Things they need to improve. Obviously, their attack, they struggled uh, early on in attack. I really think they have improved that position, but they, they struggled for any strike early on, haven't they? They, yeah, they, they, have. they had a few... Few weeks there without getting any points. Well, they've got a differential of minus two hundred, yeah. so they've scored one hundred and thirty um, with three hundred and thirty against. So clearly, you know they've got issues on both sides of the game, yeah. attack and defence. Um, to their defence, you know they've brought a few players. I understand that, so it takes a bit of time for them to gel and and, and to work yep. together. I, I thought over the last couple of of weeks they've really tried hard, yeah. um, and I think that's probably the first. That's the first measure you're looking for yeah. for a team to be able to to really give it their best shot. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm not sure um, how Trent's coaching them, but you know, to me, um, a side like the Bulldogs need to be really structured. Yeah. You know, they need to be complete in their sets. You know, good kick. Yeah. You know, their skill. You know, um, working to specific field positions mm. f- f- to score points because clearly they they can't score points from their own end. Yeah. So you're going to have to work out right. What's what's the where's the best place we need to start mm. to be able to, yep. to to score some points or to, mm. to to put a little bit of heat back on and you know get a yep. repeat sets and a bit more pressure on them. Um, and then I would think that both sides of the attack and defence would. Would lift. Yeah. Uh, the 130 would jump, and the 330 would drop. Well, yeah, yeah especially, and the, isn't it a big errors is a big one for the teams that struggle. You, you need to hold the ball for starters. You do. And where you're turning the footy over, if you're not getting a repeat set, you're making the opposition come off their line. And That's it right. Certainly gives you an opportunity to defend there. I, I agree with you. I, I think they probably they've lacked the star play in a key position. Like a, a, I think they've got people to try them, but they I thought the halves have been good generally the last few weeks. Um, but just an out-and-out superstar in those positions who, who can turn a game. Not everyone's got them. No, Ade Carr comes next year. He certainly has the ability to finish for them. But I agree with you. I think their effort's always good. I mm. think they try really hard. Um, I think they've improved their attack, but their, their effort, that's a good starting point anyway. For yeah, they're, a coach... They're, 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 sorry, mate. They've been a bit unlucky too. They, they, should, they could have been the Raiders. Raiders yeah. um, so they could have been three. So, look... They're showing some signs, some yeah. good, some some green shoots are starting to appear. Yeah. Um, how they expand off that and, and how they 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 finish their, their, their year is is going to be really important for yeah. for the future. Yeah. Well, um, just around that, what, as a coach, what is you know they can't make the finals. No. Um, what do you focus on as a coach? What's Trent Barrett saying? Listen, because it's it's a long way to go in the season um, to keep the spirits up. To keep where where do you? Where do you where do you focus on week to week? What do you what do you teach these kids? I, so I, they get so what so what are they going to get out of the second half of the year? Um, look, this is just once again my humble opinion, but to me, I'd be breaking down the, the remainder of the year. I'd be I'd be making it into short stints of you know, maybe two or three weeks, um, and and really striving to meet goals in yep. that period of time as a team and as individuals. Yep. Um, yes, they're not going to make the eight, but there can be some great. Uh, step forwards to be made here yep. for next year um, in the education of their halves and yep. what they they required, what their expectations of that are, um, in the robustness of their pack and yep. and, and, and and the defensive structures that they use. Um, to me, they need to break it down, and they need then to set little goals for short periods of time. So we're not having to wait till round twenty six or twenty five to be able to uh, to measure it. Yep. Yeah, maybe it's even. Two or three weeks, or yep. four or five weeks, or whatever whatever they need to be. But but what? Right, well, where's our best field position that we have scored points from? Right? How do we best get to that position? Yep. How do we? What's our go forward like? Because can we can we change that up a bit? Do we do we need a little bit more creativity coming out of nine to be able to take a bit of the dregs off the, the bloke yep. going forward? Because in the end, the good sides the good sides get on a, a two on one tackle. They yeah. don't. They, and this is a criticism of a lot of players. They get caught up in physicality yeah. rather than get playing in. smart. Yeah. Um, if I can get in, there's some like you look at Napa. If I, if I can get Napa 
into a two-man tackle, I'm either going to get a quick play of the ball or I'm going to get an offload. Yeah. So how do I do that? Do I do that by pushing my nine out to be able to take a bit of heat off him from a marker? Yep. Do I push up a support play up off him to keep the, the third defender Which off? Get him a bit wider of the that, ruck. That's right. So look, those little strategies, um, uh, attack-wise and defence-wise, um, and measured in short spaces, yep. Yep. I think um, then the season uh, there's there's a, there's a purpose yep. to the season. Yeah, it's a lot easier to focus in a couple of weeks than than twelve. Yeah, uh, we go to the Broncos. Um, Obviously, some, some games where defence, the leaking of points was, was really big. They really struggled containing momentum, I thought, against them. Um, I thought areas of struggle was inexperienced in the key position. And they have young team, which can also be a strength moving forward. Um, I think their forward packs their strength. If one thing, and I don't know if they play consistently, consistently but we've seen them on the weekend against the Roosters. But Pengai Junior Lodge and Payne House, if they can play their best game, it certainly gives them a great chance of winning. Uh, so I think there's a lot of... Um, responsibility on those three guys because when they're they're anywhere near their best, Brisbane are playing well. But uh, new coach Kevy Walters, they've shown some promise in some areas, but then oh, obviously some other games they've been blown off the park. Yeah, well, look, I, I thought the weekend um, they actually got a bit cranky, um, yeah. and, and they had a bit of a purpose about what they were look, trying to do out there. And and uh, Penguin Junior and and uh, you, Bradley. You, 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 that was yeah. that was from the old days. Yeah, you know, it was, great one, it, it was a confrontation, a physical confrontation. Um, um, now, obviously, it probably went a bit too far, but but that's, but that's what you want to see as fans. No one wants to see our tackles, but that was great. Yeah, there was a, two there young were, bulls going at that, it. That's right. And and for the to move for the Broncos to continue on that, they they got cranky, and I thought their energy levels went through right, the roof. Yeah. The players that you've spoke about earlier and the pack of forwards, I agree, is, is their strength. They took them on. Yeah. And, and if they can continue to keep that momentum going, I can see them winning more games yeah. heading home. I can see some upside in the Broncos. Yeah. Um, in saying that, um, they need to be playing aggressively yeah. and with purpose. They need to get the shits more often. They, they certainly do. Um, uh, and, and when someone of their size gets the shits, um, yeah. it's a bit of a challenge. Yeah. Well, we, we've seen, and we've seen Penguin like Junior Hass and Lodge, for that matter, they're through the, the best forwards. When they get cranky, it's just a matter of getting them cranky, getting competitive, and because uh, when they're on, they're, they're certainly hard to um, hard to, uh, hard to stop. But I, I agree with you. I think move going forward, when they put their best together, they they can cause them. You know, I don't think they they should be that far down the ladder because they do have some good players in the team. We'll go on to the Tigers now. The Tigers. At, at, it feels like if I, you did a halfway report summary or a f- season report summary on the Tigers for the last 11 years, it's virtually exactly the same. Um, why does this team, it's a new coach, the new players to five years ago, but it's exactly the same issues with them all the time. They're like consistent. The inconsistency is one thing. They show promise one week and you know, it feels like it's two steps forward, three steps back all the time with the Tigers. Uh, and, you're, and you're right. And... Um, uh I don't know uh, why they're so inconsistent because they've got some extremely senior players who have may, maybe not have played at the Tigers, yep. but have played elsewhere. That you should be getting more consistent consistency in performance uh, yep. week week after week. Uh, what I do see um, in the although they've, they've scored two hundred twenty points, I, I don't see an X factor. Yeah. You know, um, they, they haven't got someone who can turn the game. I think yeah. Dewey's been good for them. He has been yep. extremely good for them. But, right. but Dewey's not a Pappenhausen, a Tedesco, yeah. um, um, you know, yeah. those sorts of players uh, who can just change a game. Yeah. You know, you, you, you look at South Sydney, they've got a number of them who can change. Just, you, you can be, they win the game even though they don't look like they're going to yeah. win the game. Um, the uh, the Tigers, um, they try hard and, and obviously Madge, I've um, got a lot of time for Madge as a coach. He's a very smart coach. He demands and he drives a strong culture, uh, and they're responding to him. And I think I think Brooks has played better over yeah. the last couple of weeks, yeah, especially his kicking game. Yeah. He's he's allowed them with his kicking game to put more pressure on defence on the on the opposing sides, and I think that's been a really a positive step yeah. forward for, for Luke because he's been under a lot of pressure um, to aim up in that position yeah. as all sevens are. Um, so I can see some once again some yeah. green shoots there, but. Now, last week they they went down by two yeah. two to the Warriors. You know, like, you got to win by two. Yeah. You, and they you, could have won. You can't lose by two. Yeah, yeah. I, I think inconsistency has been a big thing. They've only won consecutive games once yeah. in, in eighteen months, and that's not good enough. And I agree with the ability to finish close games. 
they, they hit the lead 20 to 18 there against the Tigers. Um, I saw against the Warriors in the weekend, and it should have won it. It yes. should have won it. I think Adam Dewey's been great. I think one, young Laurie at the back, he's been superb, the young fullback. Uh, and, and Luke Garner on the edge, I think he's, he's a good solid player too. I, I agree with you with Brooks. Brooks, he won for 124 metres on the weekend. That's a lot of metres mm. for a halfback. Mm. It's usually taking about 12 weeks to get that far. Um, and that's when he's at his best running. And I thought he was great the week before against the Knights. And I thought he was, I thought he was pretty good in a beaten team too. Yeah, he was. So he's definitely got better. Uh, and he just needs to keep running the ball because, you know, he's, when he plays well, they're more of a chance. So, um, you know, they've just got to get a bit more bit more killing them. They're a bit inconsistent at the moment. Well, they've only, like, they've only won three games. That's, that's, yeah. that's, that's, the, that's the challenge. Um, yeah. you know, but as I said earlier, you, you can make the top eight by losing more well, than you, you win. A couple so, more. you know, to me, the, the Tigers should be striving to finish seven or eight. Yeah. Um, and that would be a step forward for them because they'd normally finish nine. Nice. You know? Always the ninth or tenth there. Always, always the bridesmaid, the bride's mate, never the bride. We right, move on to the Sharks. Obviously, the big thing about the Sharks well, off-field distractions with with Coach John Morris. There's no doubt they played a part early in the season. Um, I think the Sean Johnson injury uh, hasn't been great for him, and probably, probably the lack of ability to score points. Uh, some of the, the weaknesses I see for the Sharks, but uh, a win on the weekend, which we've just seen how much it meant to some of them players, is a great way they celebrated, but. Uh, them, them off-field distraction with Morris certainly knocked them back early in the season. Yeah, they, um, uh, they've got a number of injuries as well um, to key players. Uh, Moreland's been out for a number of weeks and Johnson, although Moreland played last week. Um, they've got a couple of issues there. Uh, obviously, the sacking of the coach, you know, that to me uh, said to the players, well, we don't really care what, ha- what happens this year. Um, just go around for the next 24 Towards. weeks and, or whatever it, whatever it may be. And... Um, and we'll see what, see what happens, which is, which is not, it's not ideal if I'm the coach coming in next year. I'm, I'm looking to try and see some, as I say, do the green what? shoots in that space. Yeah. Uh, look, I don't think the Sharks will make the top eight. No. Um, uh, they try hard and they, and they lifted last week yeah. uh, the local derby against the Dragons. Um, whether they lift this week uh, is another issue. Um, it's hard to keep coming up week after week when you've got, you know. Yeah. I think one positive for him is there's a sign. Will's gone there, Will Chambers. Yeah. Um, good mate of mine. But, you know, Will obviously not the player he was when he was 26. He's just 32, 33 now. But I know what Will, the standards he has at training. So that will certainly change. And you, you get the you get Wade Graham back who's playing plenty yeah. of footy. Moylan gets a bit of time under his belt. And you get Johnson back and Townsend. You've got some experience there. You who do. are good players you... You know, who can drive it back into the season. For Townsend, he's obviously going to Townsville um, to play for the Cowboys. So he'd want to finish his time there. Cronulla is a premiership winning halfback. He's a local junior. Um, so he'd want to finish his, his time there on the best possible note. But but if you can get a few of those blokes back, you know, Johnson gets back. You've got Townsend, Moylan Way, Graham for feeder. You had Will into the mix there. there. There's... You know, there's players there who have had success and know what it takes to, to win. Yeah, and I, I see Sharks as one of the sides... That really struggle with uh, um, with the if uh, the opposing side's got continuity of footy, yeah. set on set on set on it. They really struggle to, and they, they tend to leak points. Mm. To me, they need their senior players mm. fit and on the park yeah. to be able to deal with that. I think if they can get their senior players on the park and be able to show a little bit of a resilience in respect to, you know, con- uh, continual sets against you, which mm. you've, you've got to be able to do this yep. this, this day. These days, um, I think they can improve. Um, they're they're also on three wins, um, six losses. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what they look like at the end of the year. I, I don't see them making the eight, but um, stranger things have happened. Well, we move on to the Knights. Um, interesting one with the Knights. Uh, it feels like they've gone backwards a little bit. You know, they they made the big jump into the eight last year. Um, you know, they can still make the eight this year, but it, it just in their their form really inconsistent. Um, obviously, injuries to, to key men, um, but for me, there, there's no identity to the team. Like, how do they want to play? What do they want to play? I think sometimes their edge defence has been been really flimsy, real soft. Um, no doubt, Pierce and Ponga, they need them fit, um, and they need their key men on the field to to have any success. They, they do, they do. Um uh, bit, uh, they've been very disappointing yeah. the nights. Um, even though they're on four wins, um, they're running twelve. But um, uh, I think the game thought that they would they would be um, improve on last yeah. year. Um, they would maybe up four or five. Yeah. Um, normally uh, at home they win most games. Well, I think they've lost plenty this year at home, um, which is not, which is not good. 
Um, I know Adam's looking to try and change their culture. And Do you think maybe he's, you know, I think he would have thought he needed to have a bit of change there, but he's probably thought, well, maybe I need to clean out a bit more than, than he thought. Uh, Besides, he's the man to do it. Uh, uh, absolutely. I think they've got the right coach. Um, mm. uh, it's very, very difficult when you lose your seven, your one, yeah. and also your nine. Yeah. Uh, your nine's just come back from a ACL yeah. or long-term injury. Uh, that's just the spine. Yeah. Um, and your six, uh, I thought um, Nan was, was a good Probably one of their better players last I, year. I think he's a good. I think he's good, Kurt. There when he's got Mitchell and that's right. and Pong because he can but, just run the footy. It, that's right. It's sort of a, you know he tends to make a few. And I, I you know, see a bit of myself. He tries so hard that he can tend to make a few errors when he's on his own. You know, so. See, I, I look at the Knights. I talked about physicality a while ago. I look at Clemmer. I look at Tyson Frizzell. I've had a bit to do with Tyson um, uh, when he was at the Dragons. I think you can get more out of those players. Yeah, I think. I think that they've got more upside than than, yeah. than, than they're showing. Um, Tyson's an extremely powerful player. Yeah. Great leg speed, big body. Um, to me, um, as I said before, you need to get him one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one yeah. -on with, with defenders. Not he, he, he charges in and three have got to pull him down, which is, you know, it's a fair physical effort, but there's nothing happens off yeah. it. And that's what I think. I, I don't know. Uh, Barnett, Mitch Barnett, I like Mitch Barnett, he's a tough player, good young player. He's placed through the middle at 13 and, and uh, Tyson's on that right edge. There would be times for me when Connor Watson comes on to put Frizzell in the middle as well. Yeah. Now back in back in the day, the time back in the day, which was a year or two, a couple of years ago, the middle was like an extra, the middle extra four was like an extra front row. But with the speed of the game now, Frizzell's through the middle on the back of Connor Watson, or Connor yeah. Watson off the back of him, his footwork... He'll get one on ones through the middle, and his leg speed to get over the advantage line. It would, you know, if I know if I'm a forward defending in the middle, I don't want big no. forwards with his footwork. And no. Frizzell, I've seen Frizzell make a break in Pierce, his 300s game. He's he set the fullback and out sprinted everyone 30 metres, yeah. so his speed's outstanding. Sometimes on that edge, you can't, he doesn't get, the, you know, especially yeah. the way the Knights have been playing, he hasn't, doesn't get as many opportunities. Um, uh, where through the middle, he can get some more one on one footy. Yeah, just on Connor Watson, I thought he's been the shining light for him. Uh, he comes on and adds. He adds something. Plenty of energy, he, he, doesn't he? Energy. Uh, he creates. He creates problems through the middle of the ruck for him, as you've just identified. Uh, I thought his he's, his form's been very, very good. I know he's had some injury issues yeah. over, over over his time at the Knights, but I think he's been a positive contributor. Um, both back rowers are good players. Yeah. Um, Fitzgibbon. Uh, Fitzgibbon's a good player, I mean. um, and and the, and the player you just identified. Um, to me, you know. There's a couple of the young fellows who stood up last year that probably have played out a tad. Yeah. Um, uh, that's going to happen. Yeah. It's it's pretty you know it's pretty hard. To, you know you come into the first your first year and you, you know Bronson the Best a bit. They, you know they've done Bradman Best has done really well. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if he's 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 gone gone again at this point in time. He's probably played out a tad. Yeah. Um, but in saying all that, um, if you, if you're not creating opportunities and space for him. Yep. It uh, doesn't matter what centre it is, um, you, you're going nowhere in, anyway. So um, they're under the pump, the Knights, and, and clearly they're doing a uh, review into the into the club, which I've been a part of a few reviews in the time. Uh, it'll be interesting. Normally yeah. they do a review and they've got the answer before exactly they do the right. review. Uh, so a review is a bit of a worry the, the if reviews, you're working there. Reviews the smoke screen to say, <laughs> you're out. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it'll be interesting. They're still obviously in the hunt. They can make the finals, but they, they need a, a big second half of the year. Yeah. Do you know when um, Pierce is back? He'll still be a while. I think he's about 10 weeks all up, so mm. he, yeah. he, I reckon he could be another couple of weeks still away. Yeah, he's, he's a massive out. Yeah. Uh, and and the fullbacks are a massive out as well. Because that's where their creativity of course, comes from. Their of points course. come from. And, 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 you know, one thing Kurt Mann can worry about is just running the footy. He doesn't have to make these decisions, doesn't have to kick as much, you know. And, and Kurt, yeah. Kurt plays his game more, just worries about himself, which he's better at doing. We move on to the Raiders. Um, they're the biggest disappointments of the year, the Raiders. I had them as a premiership contender. I thought they had the roster to compete to win a competition. They won the grand finalists in 2019. They got rolled in a prelim by the Storm quite comfortably, but you know they had competed against the Storm really well the previous few years. They ruffled their feathers quite a couple of times, and they had a... I can, Rats us attitude. They had they were, they, were, they weren't scared of the bully. They took them on, you know, and, and they always rattled the storm. This year, really, really disappointing. Really disappointing. 
on the back of off-field rumours, player unrest, players are homesick, uh, and the form of key players have really seen them uh, struggle. Yeah, they have. They have, uh, and I agree with uh, your summation of the Raiders. I thought they would be uh, up there in the top four at least again. Uh, it, it's interesting, you know, when you look at teams and the evol- evolving of a football team. There's a there's a period of time that you get, and you either make make hay while the sun shines, and then it moves on. And the question you have got to ask is, does does the side need to be rejuvenated? Um, uh, obviously, they've had a lot of injuries. Yeah. They've now suffered a lot of uh, suspensions uh, to key players, yeah. um, which obviously impact on uh, on performance. Uh, they've lost games that they should have won, like they should have beat. When you look at the games, they should have beat Newcastle at um, at uh, Wagga. Yep. Uh, that would have well, been a that 16, would have been a side that. They, they lead six, what, 16. That, that was a big one on the back of all that rumour and innuendo that yeah. players weren't happy and this is, you know, um, angst with coach Sticky, Ricky Stewart. They lead 16 nil, you win that one, it all goes away. You yeah. lose 16 nil, you get run down. Mm. Um, one, of, one of the strengths is this, they've still got one of the best rosters when they're they all do. fit they do. Um, to compete. And so there's, there's showing like there, if they can get it right and they can get their best players, you know, there's no doubt. I think White hasn't had as many opportunities this year. Probably he's tried hard, but on the back of the team not going well. He hasn't played as well. Papa Lee, he hasn't played anywhere near his best. You know, Croker, the captain, hasn't been any near his best. And Hodgson, like they, these players have been injured or just yeah. out of form. They need their best players playing yeah. well in the second half of the season. Hodgson is the, is the key. His creativity is, is paramount yep. um, in getting that side going forward. Yep. Um, if he can get the side rolling forward and then create space for Whiten... And and I think a big big loss is the fullback. Yeah, huge loss. He, he's a, he is. Yeah. And was he out? How long is he out for? He's out till around twenty five. Yeah. Oh Jesus. He is a massive loss. Yeah. Um, in, in saying that, that, because that's where the creativity comes from. So mm. that's why I go back to Hodgson. I, I think he, he's he's creativity around that that uh, dummy half to get those that pack rolling forward. Yeah. Uh, if they can do that, I think then the Whitens come into it. And, uh, come into it, um, mm. but if you don't, um, Whiten doesn't get time and space. He's getting mm. knocked. He's getting hammered. You know, yeah. he's a running five eight too. Yeah. He's not a. Uh, he's not a boy. You, you want him taking the line off. Yeah. You know, uh, we go to the Cowboys. Uh, awful start of the season. I had them as my big improvers. Obviously, on the back of uh, the coach we know well, Toddy Payton, who's a you know a lifelong friend of ours, um, and, and I spent some time with Toddy at, at the Warriors last year, and before I got kicked out of the bubble. Um, <laughs> Before the bubble burst <laughs> on my time there. Um, and, but he was, I really was impressed how Toddy handled it. It was the first time up close. I'd seen him coaching uh, on a day to day basis, and he was great. I was really impressed with that. And on the back of that, I thought they were huge improvers. Well, the first six weeks was dreadful. It was rotten for the Cowboys. <laughs> like the Cowboys weren't even a first grade team. Their performance was disgusting. Mm. Well, it must have been all smoke and mirrors to Toddy's because they've won about five from seven to come back and, and they've been superb they have been for the superb. last month or last month and a half uh, and I can see them making the top eight they have been it's, it's it really it's a it's a credit to Toddy um, he made some tough decisions early he yeah. put Tom Lowell on notice he pissed off Maguire yeah. um, and you know plenty of criticism could come with that because he wasn't winning but yeah. it, it, it set an example and they, they responded well he clearly he had a vision of where he wanted to take the yeah. team um, where some of these coaches just want the vision to be the day tomorrow or the next day <laughs> Um, and clearly he knew where he wanted to go, and he yep. did the same with the Warriors last year. Um, so I've got a lot of time for, for Toddy. He's a, he's a very good thinker of the game, I believe. Um, he was a very skillful uh, wow. player um, yeah. uh, when he, in his day. Um, so he's got the cow, and, uh, and the Cowboys are invested in him. Yeah. Clearly they're playing for him, yeah. um, and they're playing really some really quality footy. Yeah. Um, they're going to be really difficult to beat at home. And if you win most of your home games, you're going to make the top eight. Yeah. So they will they will uh, be there or thereabouts at the end of the end of the day, um, because I can see them winning most of their home games yeah. from here on in. Man, I have them in the top eight. Scott Drinkwater, five eight, has been superb. Yeah. He, he he's been there probably their best player consistently, uh, and it's it's funny in that like you look at Munster, you look at um, Jerome Hughes, yeah, you look at. Um, Jack White. These are all fullbacks who are now playing five eight. That, that yeah. fullback in that running position. That's right. Um, you know how much that's changed. You know the the the, the fullback five eight. They're very similar. Just where you defend is about the only difference. But Scott Drinkwater is going superb at six. I think the big thing for Toddy 
one is the return to form of Valentine Holmes. Yep. He's been superb. But also Jason Tumalo's return to form. Tumalo was the one he put on notice at the start of the year and dropped to the bench. Now, if there was any angst there, Tumalo would just go, well, I'm spitting the dummy. Yeah. But he's come back bigger and better. He has. Uh, so that's great from Toddy's point of view and from the player's point of view that he went, well, no. Yeah. And that's, that's a great example for everyone else. Tumalo has, has bounced back the way he has. Um, well, saying, senior, senior players, it can either make you or break you. Yeah. And clearly, um, Tal Malolo's invested now. He's yeah. jumped well, on if board. If he spits the dummy, it can drag everyone else down. He <laughs> bit, comes back twice as exactly hard. Exactly right. And, and, and that's, that's a great credit to his character, to be yeah. honest with you, because he's a, he's a quality player and probably yeah. one of the great players of, of, the, of the competition. But he's jumped on board. And by these players jumping on board, the senior players, everyone else yeah. jumps on board. And it's a, it's, a, it's a show of respect you have for, for a case where you might say something I don't agree with, but I respect you enough to yes. take that on board with what you yeah. say. Now, if we don't like each other and you kick me in the ass in the media, I'm going to go, well, fucking jam it up, you. I'm, <laughs> you know? And I can be a cancer in the joint and yeah. drag everyone else down. I'm not gonna, but to go, well, you know, I might not like that. It, it might have hurt at the time, but you've got the respect and that working relationship where you take it on board and you come back twice as hard. Tom Lolo's been superb. Valentine Holmes has been superb. Drinkwater's been great. They're good players have been standing up. I think one of the best decisions Toddy made was put Cohen Hess in the middle. He yes. was rotten at the start of the he year. Was. Some of his edge defence was really poor. I think he's been a big improver. Once he's gone in the middle, because he's a big body, just running the footy, just get it and run, son. That's, That's right. the message Toddy gave him, and, and he's been superb. Well, and once again, it's a bit of a wrap for Toddy because he, he identifies the skill that Hess possesses and how can that best yep. help my football team. And he, and he puts him in, into, into the middle. And, and, look, and that's, that's, what, that's the result you get. Yeah, yeah, mate, they're a top eight team for me. I yeah. think the, the Cowboys, I think you can put them in there. Uh, moving on to the Warriors. Um, well, I think they've, they've gone okay. Another season away from home, which, which can't help. I know, I know I'd rather be up there at um, Star of the Sea on the Central Coast in Terrigal than sitting in downtown Auckland. Um, no offence to all my Auckland fans out there. Um, but I think they've done really well. Reese Walsh has come on the scene. For the Broncos, you'll be crying in their cornflakes let, letting this kid go. Um, and then obviously Roger Tuivasa-Shek, he, he's moved to the wing. Um, but he was still superb the other day after the wing. He got 280 metres playing from the wing. He flattered like, a bit too. He yeah, was, he and that's what he's yeah. got to do. You don't want him sitting on the wing. And yeah. I think Brownie's really good coach, uh, coaching attack. Uh, and you've seen that with, with the, the space Reese Walsh has created for him. They've got a good squad. They can push for a top eight. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, they can. Um, uh, you've got to admire them like, being away from home for this is the second year. Yeah. Um, and they're still performing. And they yeah. play their, their, home, their home record up there was a three and three at this stage. But, yeah. but they'll tend to win more at home than they will the, right. the, than they'll lose. Um, this, young, this young fella, he's, uh, he's an X factor. Uh, he, Welsh, yeah. yeah. But you've got him, you've got Sheck. They create things out of nothing. Yeah, you know, his feet check is just as good as I've you know I've seen seen from anyone. Yeah. Um, all you want is your pack to go forward and roll forward and then play throw these blokes into the back end of that. They're worth and their weight in gold. Gonna, aren't they? Those blokes are they're going to knock up, up scoring points. Yeah. That's what's going to happen there. Yeah, we definitely have them seeing them into the uh, the top eight, and I think they'll battle for for. I have them in the top eight, but I think they'll battle out that bottom spot. We'll meet, we'll go through our top eights at, at the end of each team. We'll go to the Titans. Titans is their ability to, to play 80 minute performance. They fade in and out of games like I faded in and out of my relationship with me, missus. She's just over there. Um, only joking, Dale. Um, their, their ability to pile on points is outstanding, but their ability to, to let them in is just as bad. Um, and I think they're a bit of a fr- fr- oh, downhill skier, so to speak. The teams they should flog, they flog. Mm. But the, I haven't seen them really gone toe to toe with some of the big dogs yet, which I think they can get to because on form. You know, they've got a great roster. You know, you've got Fafida, you've got Brimson, um, just to name a few. Uh, Tino, you know, mm. there's some great kids Quality there, players. great players there. Um, but just their c- consistency. They've got to probably be, And just their ability to put in an 80-minute performance. I think, too, another thing that they need to do with is expectation. Yeah, well, that's uh, what they haven't they, had they, for they, they haven't had expectation for some time, if, if ever, um, regardless of there's been a number of different Gold Coast teams over the years. Oh. But... But I, I, I've got a I've got a bit of uh, time for the Titans. I yeah. think there's a lot of upside to, to that. He's team. done a good job, Holbrook. Holbrook's done a great job for, with them, and I think uh, once they get that consistency of performance and that hardness about himself, um, which takes a bit of time sometimes. You, know, you can't. You, I talked about resilience before. You, you lead by twenty or whatever it was yeah. against the Broncos. Twenty-four ten, they led. Yeah. Um, that just should not happen. Um, 
game management needs to be probably a little bit better than than than. Oh, so uh, your twenty four ten was South. They led yeah. twenty four yeah. nil no, or something. It, so it. if I'm up twenty four nil, it becomes game management, yeah. doesn't it? it? It becomes all right up. You're starting your set down there. Every time you're going to get the football, we're not going to make errors. We're going to you know yeah. field position, ball control, all those all those things that we all talk about. That will come. That will come. Um, I've got a, a, a lot of time for the Titans. I've got a lot of time for. Justin and I think he uh, he can take them to places they haven't been before, um, but they just need a bit more resilience yeah. about things and a bit a play the game a bit smarter. Yeah. Um, when they, the thing about it is if you're leading twenty four nil, you don't have to win. Yeah, you, don't you, don't have to get, you don't have to go thirty no. um, straight away. Well, if they don't you, score, you don't lose. That's right. Do you? But, but you can you can plug away to to to, to keep your, the scoreboard ticking, yeah. but you don't have to keep playing. Um, you know this uh, flamboyant footy. You need to close it down a bit a little bit because yeah. you don't. You don't want to give the other side a chance. Yeah, don't give them a sniff. But they, but they, but they're a chance. They still. A, I think they're a chance to make the eight. Oh, without a doubt. If they play their best, um, yeah. they, they they can be there. It's just getting that consistency. We'll go on to Dragons. Will they surprise me? I thought they wouldn't have been where they are. Um, I think Jack Bird's been a great buy from his effort every week. is superb. He's competitor. He's tough. Um, he's a I, footballer. He is. He's a footy player. He's been fantastic. Had a few injuries, Dufty and Lomax the last few weeks. It hasn't been great because I think Lomax, I think he broke his thumb. He was superb at the start of the year. All in all, you know, you've got to give them a pass mark from where they were last year, and I thought they would be not where they are this year. I think their effort's been a lot better. They're superb against the Sharks with a lot of men out, and they're superb against Melbourne, even though the scoreline didn't show in Magic Round where they had uh, down to 11 men at one stage, but virtually played the whole game with 12 men. They kept it close. For you know, for sixty odd minutes, and the storm run away with it late. Yeah, look, I think too. Uh, Hunt's been as best I've seen him play. Yeah, he's been great. McCulloch's um, been good. McCulloch's, McCulloch's been very good. Um, look, the, the the Dragons have had um, a horrendous suspension list, um, especially over the last couple of weeks. Yep. Uh, some of the games they've played, I, I doubted their intensity and resilience. Uh, yep. The last couple of weeks, I thought they've really had a go. Yeah. And uh, to me, once again, I, I see some green shoots there when they get these players back. Um, Lomax, um, big, big, a big out. Yeah, um, not only, good to not only for his attacking ability and his defensive ability, but he kicks goals and kicks them very, very well. Um, I think uh, McGuinness was a big out. Um, he never played all year. He'd done a, um, ACL. Yeah. Uh, he he would have been of value in the middle of the ruck. Now, obviously, he's not going to not going to be there at all. So, look, uh, there's hope. That they will make the eight. Um, they're going to have to get a few troops back, um, and it won't be this week, yeah. I don't think. Um, but uh, and they need to be a little bit more consistent. Now, I, you know, it takes time for a new coach to be able to to uh, mould what he wants. Mould what he wants, and, and I do note that they've now told Dufty he could go yeah. any time he likes, which is a a big call. Yeah. Um, but obviously, there's reasons for that. Yeah. How that impacts on the team and how that impacts on performance is going to be a, a, a very a, a very big question. Especially mid-season and you're still in the hunt for semis. Yeah. You're in, well, I'm sure they're in and around the eight there now. Um, so that's a big call to because you know, potentially could disrupt the, the playing group. Well, exactly right. And, and their four and against is just about negative. It's minus three. So it's they're not, they're not any no hope of making the eight. They're, they're a great hope of yeah. making the eight. But they, they just need a little bit more consistent. They've lost a few in a row now and... Uh, they need to come back from that. We'll talk about coming back our next team. They were dead and buried. They were horrible to start the season. And then there's a return of a bloke named Turbo Tom. And all of a sudden, they're just the greatest team I've ever seen. Um, Manly. They were horrific at the start of the season. Their defence was absolutely... It was putrid. And, and the first four weeks, it was about... It hadn't... In the NRL era... So we go back to 98. In the NRL era, the 2002 Cowboys was the only... The, Second worst, that was the 2002 Cowboys had the worst start after yeah. five weeks. Then it was Manly, this yeah. Manly team. Yeah. Mate, they'll make the, I think they'll come, they'll make the top five. I think they'll overtake the Roosters by the end of the season. They're unstoppable. They pushed Penrith all the way. They just knocked off the Storm, uh, sorry, the Eels who had their second loss of the season. Um, depends and it's on all the back on the fullback. Depends on Turbo Tom if yeah. he's safe fit. But you get him back and you see the improvement in his brother Jake. DCE's yeah. been a lot better, Foz has been better. Schuster's been great. Saab. Yeah. Parker's a good solid player. Yeah. Um, you know, Harper in the centres. Kepi. I like, like, they're a good team. And the, the last six weeks, they've, they've yeah. just come along leaps and bounds. And there's no doubt it, it revolves around the man with the number one. He's, it's been a good, good a form run of, of I've seen out of any player. No, he's a quality player. And um, 
probably one of the, the better players in our game at currently. But, but I, I do note um, with him, he, you know, we, he sniffs around everywhere. Yeah. Turbo. He, if you're lazy at marker, he's coming. He's coming off the dummy yep. half. If you're lazy on an edge, he's sniffing out there. He's like a Papenhuis and a Tedesco. Yeah. The good fullbacks do that. They, t- they t- test out. Your I mean, line. he carries the ball through the middle like a forward he as does. much as anyone. You know, he's he not like he's just sitting out wide no. waiting for the money play. He, he does the hard work, which. I'm sure his teammates respect. He's on a, on, a, on every uh, every play. Look, uh, you talked about Parker. Uh, he's just a bit of a centre out of my own heart, the Parker. I think he's a quality player. Yeah. That left edge very fair, rarely leaks Defends points. well, doesn't Defends he? Defends very, very well, and he's very competent and attacking player as well. Yeah. I had a lot of time for him. He doesn't get a lot of raps, but I'll tell you what he can play. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when he, he had to defend with a, a new 5-8 at the weekend with Schuster yeah. in net. And normally, normally Foran's inside him. Um, so, and he do, they do, they've done a wonderful job. Yeah. Another one that's come, come on and looks and bounds left the drag is a Saab. Yeah. I think he's, he's wonderful under the high ball. He's extremely quick. Um, so he's reaping the rewards off the back of a rejuvenated pack who yeah. is creating opportunities and, good, and, 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 and ruck speed. And, and he's, he's coming up with some, some quality. I must, on the back of Saab Harper, the centre's been great. A lot of centres these days are the big and the strong ones, but they can't put their wingers away. No. Where his ability just to hold, you know, a bit like the old Gidley flick, yeah. hold his centre at bay, you know, with his fend, and then sort of just, even if he doesn't get the winger to come all the way in, just to get the winger standing still. Yep. Because Saab, he's about as quick, he's quicker than a Saab. He goes better than a Saab car. Like, he's a you know, big, yeah. long, he's got a big, long fend, big, long stride. Just gives him an opportunity to get on the outside of his winger. Uh, and he's been great. You're right. Saab's been superb. They uh, and then they take a bit of heat in the backfield. Both yeah. both centres. They get out of dummy half yeah. and take a bit of heat off the, off the forwards to bring the ball away in their yeah. kick reception. And, and Garrick, he you know he Garrick. went nine from nine and eight from nine now, or seven from eight or something the other day. He's he's goal kicking is a plus two. Yeah, it is. Um, they're they're a lot of upside. They'll make the eight yeah. if uh, if Turbo Tom stays. Oh, fit. Yeah, he stay if he stays fit. I've got them at fifth. I think they yeah. overtake the. I think they overtake the Roosters. Yeah. Um, and they would have been a top four team in my book because they just give a, their first five weeks was horrible. I thought they were going to get the wooden spoon. Uh, Desi was probably trying to get a better price. Well, he's too smart, old Desi. <laughs> he is too Desi, smart. Desi, they're ready to get rid of Desi. Now the mad science is back. Um, <laughs> next team, the Roosters. Now, I, I can't, you know, all teams are suffering from, from injuries, but I have never seen an injury roster like this. And there's no doubt, we spoke about it before, the, the, the NRL can't sit there and say injuries aren't a fault because every team virtually say one of their weaknesses or things that have struggled yeah. is injuries. Beamos season, Cordner, we don't know when Boy will be back. Kiri season, friends retired um, through, through injury. Um, it's a horrific injury toll to senior players. But the culture of the club, the coach, who I've got a lot of time for, one of the best, he'll go down as one of the best the game's had, I think, when he finishes. Uh, the arrival of Sam Walker's been a big plus. Um, but with Trent Robinson there, he'll keep them in the in the fight for you know just his ability as a coach and the culture of the club. But I see them dropping down to six just because of the amount of injuries they got. It's you know yeah. I think Sam Walker's a great young kid. Lockie Lamb, they've done a tremendous job, but they've got another twelve weeks of this, and it's yeah. so hard for a kid in his first year at his age to stay up for so long. That, that's right. Uh, but they've got a lot of senior players still there. Um, um, so a, a strong pack of forwards. Yep. Um, a great culture, yeah. a great drive, um, a great fullback. Uh, they'll be there or thereabouts. Yep. Um, whether they can make the top four um, is another question uh, because, as you say, there's a long way to go. Um, their record's very, very good at home. Yeah. Um, so if they win the majority of their home games, they're going to they're they're push in there. They've got a massive four and against. But uh, uh, that's with the injury rates that they've had. Yeah. I, I thought they would fade when Kiri left, yeah. uh, when he got injured. Well he, was, yeah. he, was the, he was their cre- creative yep. um, focus. Yep. Um, he went. But to their credit, um, they've pulled together. Um, obviously, the coach has, has got a wonderful culture there, and a, a terrific drive. The senior players yep. clearly have high expectations and standards that they yep. expect these players to, to adhere to. Um, and you know what? And with all due respect, and I know everyone, a lot of people don't like the Roosters, but you've got to admire uh, oh, their yeah, success yeah. and and their consistency of performance over many years. Yeah, and you talk teams talk about injuries. And that's the reason why they're not you know, playing well. I never hear Robo talk about injuries. They just keep turning up, getting the job done. Um, like I said, I, I, I agree with you. If it was a lot of other teams, I thought with the injuries, they would have faded more quickly. Yeah. 
but they've been great. No, they Victor Radley well. will loss. He's he is a class. He's a quality player, Victor Radley. Mm. Victor Radley should have played in the eighties, nineties. Yeah. I don't think he he likes these new rules too much. We go to South. Well, South on the back of fifty points against the big two. Um, their ability to ground out losses, grind out performances. Sorry. And during the year, I think they're always, well, you score 20, we'll score, I'll score 26. You score 30, I'll score 36. That goes so far, not against the big bo- big boys, because they go, well, mate, we won't let you score 30. <laughs> yes, we'll yes. let you score 10. Yeah. Or the root Storm let them score none. So, um, you know, there's no doubt they've got plenty of strike. Um, Latrell, Reynolds, Cook, their spine, Walker, superb. But they've got to have some sort of ability. To, they've got to get a bit more starch in their defence, because, you know, you, while... You score, you know, whatever you score, I'll just score more. That yeah. works against the middle of the road teams, but there's no doubt it showed that they're a fair, they're a fair way off the two big guys. Yeah, they won't, it won't work against the good sides. No. Um, and I think, um, obviously, I'm not going to tell Wayne Bennett how to coach you. I'm sure, I'm sure he's aware of, yeah. of, 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 of his team's um, pluses and minuses, and I'm sure he'll deal with it because he's been in this space before, I assume. But, uh, you know, they've got some great creative attacking players. Uh, I don't know what the Reynolds decision um, done. has done. Yeah. Uh, I know, I know. He's talked it up that he wants to, you know, obviously just have a, yep. a good final year. So I don't believe that's coming out of him. But you know, when you lose a player who's been a, a lifelong player for your, for your club, I don't know how how that uh, impacted. Uh, Defence is their issue. Um, there's no doubt about that. Um, yep. I've been a little bit uh, disappointed in Cook at a dummy yeah. half. Um, in saying that, um, Cookie's a little bit different than other nines in the game. I. When you when you compare him to the good nines, he's probably not as creative with the footy out of Certainly there as, as others. Guys. But but you get a quick play the ball and watch out. Yeah. Um, and, and clearly that's his strength. And and and, and um, obviously he's uh, suffering a little bit because he he can't get that ruck speed. Um, so you know, I'm sure I'm sure Wayne's aware of all that. Um, that to me, um, I think they're at a tipping point yeah. for the year. Yeah. Um, they've been beaten by 50 by Panthers and Storm in the last couple of weeks. Um, I know they're not going to play the Panthers and Storm every week, so no. they will still touch plenty of sides up coming, yeah. coming home. But the big one in, look, if you're going to win the comp, you're going to have to beat them yeah. both. You think the Storm are going to be, they're both going to be in a prelim, the Storm and the Panthers, so you've got to beat them one, one of them and then yeah. beat the other one. Yeah. I, I heard a good saying the other day, and I, I said it's exactly right. So sometimes you've got to tackle yourself to a win. Yeah. Not attack yourself to well, a win. Mate, not many teams do that, do no, they? They moment. don't. They, I, I think the Storm do. Yes, yeah, and Penrith do uh, as and well. Penrith do as well. Penrith have kept teams. Their, their average is less than ten. Like, that, it's ridiculous. That's, that's exactly right. And uh, uh, th- you can't leak points yeah. uh, and expect every week to be able to score yeah. more than, than well, what you leak. Yeah, exactly right. And I agree with you. We dive into the Eels. Their right edge defence was a bit of a worry on the weekend. Um, Wonga Blake's first game back. I, th- I think his decision making wasn't as great. Left Big Fergo isolated a few times, and um, to Manly's credit, they took advantage of it. They've been extremely consistent. Parramatta have, have been for a few years now. They're, they'll be in the top four again. I, I think for them, I know it's halfway, but their big question mark. Let's win some semis. You know, mm. they, they've they've been a top four team and bounced bounced out a few years in a row. So, um, you know, they'll, they'll be in the top four again. I think they finished third. Um, and for them, it's it's you know they need to they need to push for a prelim final because they've got the squad to do it. Oh, there's no doubt about that. But they also need to say beat the beat the Storm, for instance, yeah. at, at Melbourne, yeah. not a bank west. Yeah, they're well, that's ten, the strength of the bank west record. They're, they're, they're playing they're, there. They're ten points. They're ten points, maybe better more yeah. better team there. Um, they'll, they'll be in the top four. There's no doubt about that. They're very consistent. Um, Gutherson, outstanding yeah. player. Uh, he, he, his performances never vary. Nah. You know, he's good games to his bad games. He's very, very good great leader. I have a great respect for the, the hooker. Yeah, um, Marnie. Marnie, I, I think he's a quality player. Yeah. Uh, very creative at a dummy half. Tough, tough as teak yeah. in the middle of the ruck. Good kicking game yeah. at a dummy half, which is a bonus for any for yeah. any team. Um, he's an unsung hero of that yeah. that that side. Uh, the young, the young halfback. Um, no, you just talked. Uh, you, just, uh, you just talked about the five eight uh, young. Uh, the young, young fella just. Brad Arthur. Brad, Brad yeah. Arthur's young fella. Jacob. Jacob. Oh. He he was on that right edge at the weekend. Yeah. So you had, you had uh, it was always going to yeah. be a, a challenge. Um, and it, while he's there, they'll always come yeah. down that uh, to, yeah. to, to, to challenge him. I think he's been going really, really yeah. well. Um, um, for a young fella, um, he'll probably have another couple of weeks and then have a breather. But I thought he's done done really well. Look, I, I look at look at their pack. 
they're uh, uncompromising. Yeah. They've got good leg speed. They've got good, good body shape. Papalihi, Isaiah Papalihi on that left-hand side, he's been a great buy for Absolutely. Him. Probably the buy he, of the year. He is a handful yeah. out there. Um, and once you get out there, it's very difficult to get numbers in. Yeah. So he's nine times out of ten, it's one-on-one on one. On one or yeah. max two-on-one. Yeah. He's a handful, so he's going to get a quick play the ball on you most times and will stick plenty of metres in you. Mm. Um, so look, I, I think I think they got the the side to. Um, they do. When, you, when you look at team, when you look at things that you need in a team, their back three is great. Gutherson, the two wingers, Fergo and Marcus Sebo, yeah. you know they carry the ball thirty five times between them. The two wingers, for, they give you four hundred meters, uh, and, and they've got they've got all the ingredients to, to push for a title. See so that see so that that point you just uh, brought up then, that is so critical in the modern game. Yeah. Your ability to be able to start your sets. Yeah. Um, and how far you travel, yeah. because that in, then impacts on where you finish your set. Yeah. So if you've got these big bodies coming forward uh, and, and are a handful, yeah. which starts your set and starts to get some ruck speed, then you've got the, the pack coming behind yeah. that. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, you're, you're, you're turning the football over within the ten metres yeah. of, of the opposing side. You're, that's halfway to winning games. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> well, we move on to the top two, the big dogs. We go to the Storm. Uh, a lot of injuries at the moment, but we've seen on the weekend against Canberra. They were superb. Uh, still got the job done. Thirty-four unanswered points. I look at them. They got size. They got speed. The way they throw the ball around, or the, the structures they got, players in motion. Every it's like Penrith. Every, they're asking questions every tackle. Um, not only you got Munster and Pap, uh, Pappenhausen, Jerome Hughes, the one-two punch combination of Harry Grant and Brandon Smith is the most deadliest in the game. They can beat you there. They can beat you um, with their forwards through the middle. They can beat you with with Hughes and Munster and Pappenhausen. Um, Remus Smith is another one who's come along great. George Jennings, another one of these unsung heroes, go down to Melbourne and Billy Ake turns them into superstars. Um, you know, they had a couple of close losses at the start of this year to Penrith and Parramatta, but since then, you know, I think they've won eight games straight, 13 plus, so they've just blown teams off the path. Yeah, well, I, I, I don't know what more I can say about the Storm. Yeah. Um, one thing, I, a bloke that I would like to give a rap to is, is Welsh. I think he's an absolute Walsh, he's superb. champion player. Big Dugong. Mate, tough, a tougher player you wouldn't want to meet, but so meticulous about his job and what he does. He does and it'll be work. very, very interesting in the state of Origin because he'll be picked in the front row for yeah. Queensland. How, because he did create problems for Cleary in the state of Origin last yeah, year. Because he did it in the grand final as well. He'll exactly make, right. So it'll be in, interesting to see what happens there. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's no doubt I'll have them finishing my top two. Oh, yeah. uh, Craig Bellamy, what, what more can you say? He's just the best in the business. Uh, we go to Penrith. No injuries, which has been a strength and the lack of injuries. They've got great depth. They're playing with great confidence. Their combinations right across the field are superb. And, and on the back of it, like you said, their defence is out first class. Mm. Um, more, they've scored a truckload of points. Their defence is, is what sets their game up and gives them the ability to, to, to attack from good positions. Um, you know, I like Luai, Cleary and Jose. Yeah, I think the combination of those three across the park, linking from right through to the middle, then to the left side, um, the way those three guys combine with the footy um, is superb and it throws great challenges to the defence all the time because they're ready to go on any... They can pull the trigger on any play. They've got strike all the way across the field. Uh, and, and again, what can you say? Whether they're 26 from 27 or something like that, that's an unbelievable... Unbelievable run. Yeah, well, I think they're only averaging around about what, um, eight points against. Defensively, that's yeah. unbelievable. So, actually, it's a little bit less than that. Yeah. So, so they only have to score nine to win. Yeah. And they're going to score more score than nine. Score twice. Um, they, they've got strike all over the park. Yeah. Uh, they've got a wonderful... Uh, clear is playing out of his skin. Yeah. But it's not only... Their kicking game's so good. Yeah. Uh, short, long, doesn't matter what it is. Goal kicking, he doesn't miss. Um, they're, they're currently r- riding the wave. Yeah. Um, but as you know in this game, um, anything can happen and one yeah. injury or two injuries or whatever can, can change things. Yep. But you'd have to think that they are currently sitting uh, on top of the table, four points clear. I'd think that they would nearly finish on top. Yeah. Um, and, you know, their attack is, is, is outstanding. They throw questions. And the real changes have helped. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. That, that quantity would have footy. You, know, you yeah. get a six again against you. No way. Yeah, you know, he's just going to... you got... You got um, the big back rower um, kick, out. kick out on the edge, yeah. like, mate, he's me and Mountain. Good luck with that. Um, but even Burton's gone to that left centre and he's been superb. He has. He has. He has been very, very good. They, uh, they'll finish. They should finish top of the top of the tree. Yeah. Uh, regardless. It depends on injuries, of course, but but I can't see them, um, you know, six and nil at home, five and nil away. 
<laughs> haven't lost this year. They haven't lost no, this year. Haven't lost a game no. yet. Bit, bit lucky against the Storm, yeah. um, um, but with, uh, not lucky. Uh, uh, probably a game. Probably way. a game that reflects where they are in the comp. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll go through my top eight. I'll go. Um, I'm going to think Panthers will finish on top. Storm, Eels, and South round out the top four. Um, I'm going to go Manly finish five. I think they will jump the Roosters, who will be six. So they're a lock. The top six for the, they're a lock, right? Then I just think in the top six right now, I think Manly and the Roosters change from right now. Yep. So I think they're a lock now. Seventh and eighth is where you know there's plenty of teams in contention for it. I'm going to put the Cowboys and the Warriors uh, to come into my seventh and eighth position. Obviously, there's the Dragons, um, there's the Titans, you know the Knights. They're all pushing for that. But I'm going to go the Cowboys seventh, the Warriors eighth. What who have you got for your? Yeah, like obviously Panthers, Storm, Eels. Rabbitohs, I'll put yeah. them there, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I think Manly can. They're yeah, a chance to get them too. I'm, I'm not sure on them. Um, as, I, uh, as, as, you, as you say, they, they, the Seagulls could jump up there. They're, they're on fire. Uh, I agree. Uh, Seagulls, Roosters. Uh, I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to go Titans, Cowboys. Titans, Cowboys. What's their run like in? Do you know the Titans? Uh, the Titans run in is hard. It is hard. Well, mate, they're, they're a good enough team to beat. They've yeah. got. Let's they're, say they'll go to the last six games. What have they got well, the they've got the Warriors' last game. That could be a, that could be for a top eight. Knights, Storm, Rabbitohs, Cowboys, mm. Bulldogs. This is this is from the last twenty-five up. Yep. Bulldogs, Dragons, Eels. They've got to buy Raiders, Seagulls, Roosters, Storm. So they've got yeah. Storm twice. twice. Storm twice. Eels. Uh, Eels. Uh, yeah, the Eels. So they got they got they got seven. Yeah. Um, Tough run home, seven well, and, you know, teams if they placed get there, above them. And if they get there, they're going to deserve it. Well, they are. Right. So um, the only reason I went there is to make it a little bit different to yours. Yes, really. exactly. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the Dragons. <laughs> I've always... No, listen, I'd love to see them there, but I can't no. possibly say that. Mm. All right, Bobby, thanks for joining me, mate. Yeah, um, pleasure, I hope mate. he's got a kick out of that. Let's see how right we are. But I would sit here at the end of the season. Everything we just said could be absolute rubbish. But uh, we'll soon see how that is as we move into the second half of the season. Um, it looks like the Penrith and Storm are setting the, uh, setting the pace once again. Thanks for joining me, Dad. Pleasure, mate. No worries.